We'll call the January 17th meeting of the airport commission to order. It's been a while since we've been here, but I think everybody still remembers each other. Uh, roll call. Neil Johnson. Here. Greg Collier. Here. Andrew Barker. Here. Joel Gardner. Here. Steve Smith. Here. Bill Schoonover. Here. Greg Willoughby. Here. They'll have her minutes at the next meeting. So. Comments from the audience? You want to speak? Hi, Daniel Hughes, GM for Summit at Springdale. Uh, just, uh, we're not in the agenda, so I wanted to come up real quick and uh, give a couple numbers and kind of let you know how we're doing. Um, so I wanted to give you the numbers for 2018 compared to 2017, the gallons moved. Uh, so for 2017, Avgas moved just over 107,000 <coughs> gallons and jet uh, 400 and 47,000 and then 2018 uh, for Avgas was 96,400 uh, and Jet was 406,000 um, so that's about 2018 was about $52,000 or I'm sorry 52,000 gallons less moved but looking at the charts that uh, falls in in place for where the airport was shut down and so um, I think it would have turned out to be probably the best year that we'd had as far as moving fuel goes. Um, uh, but just wanted to run those numbers by you. So um, hopefully this next year we'll kind of see an increase with a full year of operations. And that's, that's where we're at. So. While you're there, can I ask you a question about, uh, you know, we've been uh, waiving the flow fees for football games. Are we still getting I'm not sure how years previous were before to 2018, and I came about came in about mid-season for 2018. Um, didn't see a whole lot of traffic, not much more than what I probably would have normally seen for general traffic coming in, um, but the discount was taken advantage of specifically for the games on occasion. Um, but as far as I could find, I did, no records were kept by Suzanne on the actual numbers. Um, but if I'm wrong, I can find those and uh, hopefully get them. take advantage of it whether they came to the game or they used to yes. time to fill. Yes, and this next year I'm planning on advertising on social media that, that, that the discount is in place for people flying into the region to take <coughs> advantage of and hopefully pull more traffic in. I was just curious about that. We need a successful team. <laughs> I understand that. <laughs> well, you, you haven't arranged that yet? Uh, I don't have that <laughs> Any other questions for me? Any other questions? <clears throat> Thank you. Any other member of the audience want to speak? You know, Neil, the only other thing I want to ask you to add on to Daniel is if, if we could, we'd like to get item on the agenda to bring that in each month and repeat my verses in the end on the be prepared. Hmm? I think one time we did, and Suzanne didn't think it was necessary at times. So we would be happy. We would be happy to do that. Comments from Summit. Is that what you're asking? For? I don't see a problem with that. Next item: we have election of officer for another year. Any comments, suggestions? I'd make a motion that they stay as printed. I'll second that. Okay, I do want to see if you I figure it's a pleasure to the commission. Any comments? Roll call. Johnson? Yes. Collier? Yes. Parker? Yes. Gardner? Yes. Smith? Yes. Skidover? Yes. Willoughby? Yes. Okay. 
we uh, I had an item to the agenda late. I think it, everyone got it, but uh, we've been, as everyone knows, we vacated the uh, restaurant. I don't think we've had a meeting since then. So I had a, a few comments. Uh, I've talked to Greg, has been on top of this for with the prior tenants. Um, I think he was had was given the order of charge to go ahead and visit them, as you all know. I was unaware, did not know just if how the fixtures were went through the uh, cycle. I know that uh, what little we had there disappeared when we, I guess it was Bill then, right before Bill came in. And Bill then furnished it. Then all right. Then when he left, the people from Huntsville assumed took over part of his equipment and all. Is that right, James? Yeah, they bought part of his equipment. Speak to that equipment. And what we have today, the only thing that's in the restaurant today is uh, a little dishwasher left in there. But as far as I'm, we've never had any equipment. It's everything's just been came with the owners. Right. My understanding is the only thing we owned in there was the vent hood. Correct. Is that accurate? Okay. Yeah. Correct. So we provided a vent hood that's meets all the requirements from the fire department and all the safety <coughs> Correct. what would be required. Yep. The question is, and James speak to this also, is uh, I don't know just how, how many people, people have expressed, expressed an interest in the restaurant, <coughs> but uh, I would like to hear James comment on that and what their comments have been. I know we can discuss it a little bit, James and I have, but I don't know if everyone else is privy to it. Yeah, I've had a couple people that's interested and uh, hadn't heard back from them. And I spoke to a lady yesterday that uh, Mark Myers suggested. So she's in the audience today, so she was curious about the restaurant as well. So no contract signed as of yet, but she just looked at it yesterday. Well, and before we get to that point, <clears throat> as a commission, we need to discuss that contract and make some changes to that contract. Correct. And we did discuss that, that we were going to have some stipulations in the contract, such as time of operation, things of this nature. The other thing I think that, that uh, I want to ask the commission is, do we want to continue to stick with the same program of just having a space and allow people to apply for it, furnish the own equipment, or do we want to furnish an, an equipped restaurant, go out and purchase the equipment, and then add to the lease in order to recover part of it? I know Wyman brought up an interesting take on that. There is some possibility of getting some surplus equipment from. Oh, yeah, for sure. Don't you use, use, oh, yeah, there's a lot of. That's what really happens. But I'm talking about, we had an estimate up to around $25,000 it would take to equip <coughs> to operate a restaurant. Right. My question is, is, is that even in the thinking of the possibilities of us proceeding with that in mind? Well, I personally don't think that we should be in the restaurant business, just in the uh, square foot lease business. Um, I think that actually having an equipped facility would lease better, easier, and longer. Uh, that way somebody doesn't have to come in on a startup and have to have that $25,000 investment. And if their startup doesn't uh, start up, then we can continue on with the next one. We don't have to go through this uh, dragging in and out of equipment all the time. So I would, say, I would say yes. I would like to see us explore even further the, uh, the equipping of the equipment. My only concern would be the type of restaurant, the type of service, whether it be breakfast, lunch, lunch, supper, type of stuff. 
if you put something in there, it doesn't meet their requirements, you know, and the type of thing. So you kind of—it's kind of like, you know, building a house. Everybody's got a different way they want to furnish and, and do that. When you set something in place, can that be a hindrance as well? I think you could probably get some Generation. general equipment that would meet. I wouldn't say everyone's needs, but you could certainly meet most restaurants' needs. A grill with, under the hood. Uh, uh, right. A grill and a flat top and, and a deep fryer. fryer. And, and, deep yeah. fryer, yeah. Those things are pretty. You're going to cover 95% of what people would be doing in there. And you have to have the wash basins and all of that, you know. But I would certainly be in favor of. Kind of look the layout so they're not, you know, right. looking against each other. You've got limited space. You don't want right. people that need to go here. You have to have somebody that knows that before we start putting something in there this is basically where we got the numbers is uh, the gentleman went to the supply house and said what would we need and this was a basically a basic uh, uh, a place a basic furnishings for right. a basic restaurant right around the number around 25,000 that's where we got that and that's what I felt like all we needed at this time is a number that would and allow you to buy whatever would be would right. fit that need within those parameters that was my take on rather than get down to exact equipment and then you can operate within that i, I think that our the, the, the price, price on our lease is so reasonable right now that it could stand to go up a little bit especially with with equipage like that i think that would be a a really nice way to help offset that and maybe help keep people in there a little bit longer I, my feeling is we're, if, if we do that we're going to have several applicants maybe not uh, would that be something then you would want to put it out for bid that you'd want to uh, set a price on it and go to the earth look at the applicants, interview the applicants, and see what can come out with the best possible I think based that's on experience, based on yeah, the I type of food they produce and things of this nature. Because we do know that it wasn't, it's not a place for uh, gourmet food like we've <laughs> had presented in the past. And it, right. Or wine tasting. <clears throat> yeah. So <laughs> at least those, that the model just hasn't worked for that restaurant. And I'm not one to tell you what will. The way that Fred and Lily ran it for ever and ever and ever seemed to work pretty well for a long time. Yeah. My, my only other question would be, long term, what, how long do we expect that that would be? Land acquisition, if we were to build another executive terminal up on Emma, would we want to do it there? And what you know what I'm saying? What do it right. And if we're looking at something like that, we're going to happen in the next five years. Know the investment there to do that, and then try to do it. Well, as well, uh, honestly, in my opinion, in in that case, you could shift over, and I it, I would think it would make sense to move the restaurant to the Emma location because it. it's going to have better traffic from all the other areas. So just move it would be my at this point my just, opinion. Just a thought to consider. Yeah, for sure it is. It is for sure. Well, you're going to have a contract in place here, and if by that arises, you can. Certainly get a different We could deal with that, yeah. I don't know if we can look that far down the road right <laughs> now, making, it, making this. It's just uh, there is a road somewhere out there. We know <laughs> it. We hope it's going to happen. That, we hope that's a problem. We're, we're thinking about it. I thought it ought to be considered a problem. Right. It's, it, right. We, yeah. Yeah. it definitely does. Well, you've got several unknowns on that terminal building down there. Yeah. One is the funding for the building itself, and then the other is the funding for the apron and the taxiway to it. When we know that FAA is going to want the east side taxiway to come first, well, that's going to take the next two years. So you're yeah. looking four or five years out at least. Earliest. Right. Yeah. <coughs> if we found equipment, we install it. Take another step further, say we. Yeah, I would think we would. Nation, what I, we need to we, we have would the want capability to, to, to install so. it, and yeah. I'd recommend that 
he let James explore the cost of equipment and furnishings and fixtures, and you asked for proposals to operate the airport or the cafe, because and give us another month to catch up on our cash, because with the grants and everything we're going right now, we're overdrawn at the bank $372,000 at the end of the year. And it's going to take a while to recover all that. <coughs> and right now the city's having to cover that, and they're covering some other stuff that takes our available cash to do that. And I wouldn't want to ask them for more than what they've already covered on us. But I would put that on the front burner because we're going to be putting people on hold. Right. Right. That's why I said go ahead and ask for proposals and explore the. It might be that we could get by just with the furniture and fixtures, and the, and the, and then they buy their equipment, right. or, or they may somebody may bring a proposal to furnish it all. Yeah, my thinking is that's gonna that's gonna be a big determining factor for somebody wanting to go in there, whether they are gonna have that provided or they're gonna have to provide it. Well, if the kitchen fixtures are the most expensive, I would think, you know, tables and stuff like that might be more in line with what somebody would bring. But we would provide those expensive items like the refrigerator, the dishwasher, the grill, and stuff like that. Uh, well, but what we have for us today, do we want to proceed in this fashion or not? In the event, and then look for the money. I would say know, good. Uh, I'm not. I don't think we're getting the cart before the horse because we can no. explore the revenue source later. Yeah. We made decisions before uh, the entrances that we put in, taking yep. out the airlocks and putting in entrances and stuff. We we spent some money on that building, and this to me is a is an asset. I don't think it's an asset. It's it's I think it's an yeah. asset. Yeah, yeah. Move it on it, and <clears throat> at least if someone moves out, we'd have we'd agreed. Probably yeah. have more people. In line to do you need a, do you need a formal motion uh, or just a recommendation yeah I would I would love to see us move forward today to determine if that's the direction we want to go we don't have the money right now right. Like Wyman has said to go out there and plunk it down but we can we can explore that at least we can get to work on it and get the amount of equipment we can also start taking applications and, and start looking at people yeah. that may want to do this and try to somehow or other we're going to have to, I don't know that we want to sit there at a $400 a month <coughs> rent on it after we provide that that's a, that'd be another issue to talk about and uh, I don't know if we can come up with that today either or not I think that if you can get us some estimates that's going to help us determine how much any we want to adjust the well, again, uh, and Ray has, Ray Dodson's here today, and he's one brought me this uh, <coughs> proposal on the cost of the equipment, and it's in the neighborhood of $20,000, $20, $25,000. I looked at it, and uh, <coughs> without getting into specifics of, of what kind of dishwasher, what kind of this, that, and that, right. they said they, can, they could furnish equipment for twenty twenty-five dollars in a $25,000 range. Right. And, that's not just a set number, but it should it won't go over. Right. In fact, I think there was some cushion in there for you know, that. We went and got a quote, just same deal, just a rough idea of a kitchen, and it was under twenty thousand, right at twenty thousand. So it might even be under twenty. You know, it depends on what you settle in on. Uh, and then uh, explore the. The money possibility where we can get it. Uh, we you know, look to the city before to loan us the money or provide it in some aspects. Where we've been, we've done pretty good on the last bunch of money they gave us. And uh, so, I would look. I'd entertain a motion to proceed or not proceed in this fashion, and then I would, uh, I would encourage us to get us a committee to go find the money. In short order. I motion we proceed. I'll second it. 
And we're going to proceed in what, Andrews? <laughs> <laughs> did, we, did we proceed to um, get, get further quotes and, and, and an equipment list of what we would like to see in, in the restaurant? Okay. Probably need to form a committee to on that. I don't know. I think I just volunteered myself. You want to put that? <laughs> <laughs> yes, you did. I think I just called. You want to put that committee in the motion? Yeah, I'll I'll chair that. Okay, we've got a motion that we proceed with uh, <coughs> the purchase of equipment for the restaurant and form a committee to find the money. Roll call. Collier? Yes. Parker? Yes. Gardner? Yes. Smith? Yes. Schoonover? Yes. Willoughby? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Probably going to appoint commissioners to that committee. Pardon me? You're going to appoint commissioners. Yeah. Uh -huh. I was going to ask for volunteers first. <laughs> need to remember that it'll be subject to freedom of information, so the press has to be notified each time they meet. Well, that can be done. It can just notify Rose and she'll notify the press. We, uh, I was going to ask for volunteers. We don't need over two. Fine. Do you want to do it with me, Greg? Greg and Andrew? <laughs> yeah, with it. That, that works for me. Uh, I spell C O L L I N. <laughs> <laughs> Greg Willoughby. <laughs> I'll be. <laughs> Okay, you've got your charge now. The, most of the street corners are taken yeah, up I here will. lately, so you might want to think about another way to get it. Uh, we have, uh, I don't see at this point, I know we've got a couple of interested people in the audience that are interested in the restaurant, but we'll be making a uh, we'll be making creating an avenue for you to make your proposal to I think James has been he's been doing it anyway so we need to get with James Smith the facilities director at the Springdale Airport to make these to get on the list to make the proposals and that that sort of thing and then it'll come under review uh, don't know just how to structure that right now but any information that can be provided, history, uh, hours of operation, days of operation, types of food, whatever you can think of, just anything that, that you could bring to us, and then we'll look at that. And uh, I know Ray and Lisa is interested in it. They have the uh, the cafe down here on town now, the Amish cafe. Everyone's eating there. And then there's another lady here. That has an interest to us there okay and uh, you might introduce yourself I think most people know Lisa could you come up here I'm Lynn Murphy and I'm from Rogers Arkansas and I know Mark and I've uh, been in the waitress restaurant business for over 30 years and I've learned a lot of the do's and don'ts, and I'm really excited about this. So, what was to say? <laughs> okay, good. Well, thank you. Thank you. And I'll ask Ray or Lisa to come up and introduce themselves also, for those who might not know them. My name is Ray Dotson. Uh, my wife and I uh, have the little Spring Creek Amish Market on Emma Street. I think we've been there five years, five years. And um, I like to take all the credit for the good food that comes out of there, but I can't. It's, it's my wife and my mother-in-law is the baker down there, and they do a pretty good job. I don't know if you all have had the opportunity to come, but we invite you all to come and, and uh, sample what we do or what she does. And... Um, uh you know we we're we're excited about this um we everything around us downtown emma is just is booming and uh, uh we're really excited what's going on at the airport so uh i used to eat at the airport probably three times a week 
back in its day. So I know the potential that's there. Uh, we just got to figure out a way to get that clientele back. And uh, I think we can, with our food and with our experience, I think we can do that. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else here has, a, has an interest in a restaurant? I guess not. Operations report, James. All right, Sarah, you want to go ahead and get yours out of the way? Good afternoon, commissioners. I feel like I am not doing my lawyerly duties if I don't have a whole spread of paperwork right in front of me when I speak. Um, I notified you that there had been a settlement proposal in the Gary Howard lawsuit that we have. As you're aware, Mr. Howard has been out of the hangar since I believe May of 2018. So right now, this is just collecting on back rent. Um, I handed you, um, I emailed you spreadsheets with outstanding balances, and there is a proposed settlement offer for $1,250. And seeing that we are a public entity and I am a public lawyer, all of our settlement discussions have to be made in public, which is good because we want to be transparent. So um, I did some calculations myself, and lawyer doing math is um, always a fun challenge. But I took the amount of rent owed for 27 and 2018, um, not including late fees, and subtracted the amount that Mr. Pat Howard had paid to the city. And the settlement proposal is actually pretty close in line with that amount would be the difference. Um, one of the benefits of accepting this settlement proposal is payment would be immediate. Um, I will say I am happy to move forward with suit. We do have a trial date set um, and to see what kind of a judgment we could obtain if we went that route. But first of all, there are no guarantees in any lawsuit. Number two, collection is always an issue. And uh, um, I'll say there are certain types of income that we would not be able to collect on, so ch such as Social Security money, that um, we can't garnish that and we can't freeze bank accounts. So um, taking that all into consideration, I believe this would be a reasonable settlement. Um, I will also say there were questions asked of me whether this would be considered um, debt forgiveness. We would not be treating this as a debt forgiveness. It would be um, a litigation settlement. It would be a dispute settlement were we to um, agree to pursue this settlement option. So I'm happy to answer any questions that you have for me. How much penalty are we writing off? Well, I, again, we wouldn't be writing off well, and... Um, how much penalty are we ignoring or... or settling on penalty? that? So that I believe I believe the total amount owed, um, according to the ledgers, was around 7000 Okay, 7000 Around 7000 And you do have the numbers in your packet for the amount listed owed for each hangar. This settlement doesn't include any lost rent from May when he vacated till present. I believe that they rented out the um, fairly quickly. <clears throat> Guys, I think we got to just take this settlement and be done with this. But we know we've had a terrible time collecting in the past, and so if this is cash. <clears throat> And I, w I would not be recommending the settlement if this was not a cash in hand guarantee, but because that is part of the proposed settlement agreement, that's why I believe it'd be reasonable in taking this before the body. Got a settlement and we had to pursue that. It, it could take months or even years on that if we would be able to collect on that. And that's just the reality of it. Is this negotiable? Negotiable. Um, if you would like to um, return with any counter proposal, um, I'm happy to take that direction on it. Um, I will say it is set for trial in February. Um, I would need to ask the court for a continuance for a later court date to be able to explore that. But again, I'm happy to take the direction from the commission. Bill, what were you thinking? $2,500. I mean, maybe it's not worth it. Maybe it's not worth $1,250. I just hope that we've all 
learned from this that we won't allow us to let any any single tenant get this deep into us going forward. I think that's the that's the takeaway from this. I think we lesson we take learned. Our lumps, we take our our money that's guaranteed to us, and we move on and forget about it. Talk about that of setting a three month. Back of my mind, it's something about three months. If they're three months in arrears, we and, so, and we have and we have a couple of people. We have two tenants right now, um, Scott Davis and Bill Duhaim, that are 90 days behind on that. Um, it's the perfect season to collect on that, being tax season on that. So I'm hopeful we can remedy that pretty quickly without having to go through the litigation process because this has been. This has been going on for at least six months, just filing the lawsuit and being in that process. We, I think it was last February when we initiated proceedings on this. Yeah, if anybody hits 90 days, they go to city attorney. Yeah, that's, I think that's, and I think we discussed that, and I think if we go back into the minutes, we'll find that we, after 90 days, and then we were start the process. Mm -hmm. So that being the case, I think, in my opinion, we ought to, Bird in hand. I'd make a motion to accept the $1,250 payment in full. Okay, motion to second that we accept the offer. Any more discussion? If not, roll call. Barker? Yes. Gardner? Yes. Smith? Yes. Spinover? Yes. Willoughby? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Collier? Yes. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Um, and if you could put me on the agenda for next month regarding the two tenants right now that are more than 90 days, and I can give you an update on that. I appreciate your time. As always, if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact me. Thanks, Ms. Parkman. Thank you. Thank you. All right. And as she said, we've got our two people that she's working on. Other than that, everybody else is pretty decent. I've got a couple of quotes here for the terminal roof. Yeah, you know, okay. we looked at that from whenever the drains wasn't properly put in. One is uh, fifty thousand seven seventy one. Sixty-two thousand eight fifty-five. That's a complete new roof, right? Complete new roof. And that roof can't be repaired. Well, what they're afraid of is on those roof drains. Whenever they repaired them the last time, they didn't put them in properly. They didn't seal those roof drains back. They're going to have to probably cut those out and put new ones in because they're all rusted. Cost. And just reseal around them. You have to cut a four-foot hole from what they were saying. I can find out. Do we need a new roof on the rest of it, or is it just these two locations? Well, there's several roof drains up there, so I'll just have to see what the options are for how much cutting it would be on those. Well, let me ask you this. Was the, was the request for quotes for an, a new roof, or was it for fixing? The fix roof? it. They're, they're saying this is the only way they can fix it. That explains that. Aren't there multiple? Areas that are leaking. Well, once it goes under that membrane, it runs everywhere. Yeah. <clears throat> How many people did you have looking at it? Is that a mop roof? It's a membrane roof. It's not membrane. mopped. How is the joint sealed? Heat? Heat sealed? Is that what they're proposing on their replacement? Hmm? I don't know. It's been properly it's installed. Did we have a repair done on it? Yeah, this was back when it was installed, however many years ago. This is not the original roof? Is it the original? No. Okay. I thought it was a yeah, I remember Doug having a roof done whenever I first started with the city. <laughs> okay.
I can have them look at uh, each drain and see if they can just be repaired there. How much damage, how much exposure or risk are we taking to let this set for another month or two? It doesn't leak every time, so it's not gonna it's not gonna mess us up not to do it right away. Correct. And when it does leak, how how bad are the leaks? Not bad. I mean, it's just you see the ceiling tile get wet. Ceiling tile. What you can't see is what I'm worried about. Yeah. Does that do those quotes involve anything other than the roof and the drains? Is there do they take into account any unseen damages? Well, it's taking all the putting all new flashing around the roof as well. Because all that's pieced together up there, it looks like. So, was there any inspection done? Maybe this is kind of along your line. Is there was there any inspection done below, below the, the roof, the roof to see if there's any other damage, water damage in there? That yeah, it's all metal frame, so I mean you can't can't really okay. It's not going to rust out. Right. What do you need from us, sir? Well, I think we ought to see if it can be done without a whole roof, and if not, then we'll. Can you get those two guys back and get them to look at it and tell us, first of all, maybe their professional opinion on can it be repaired, and second of all, what what the cost would be if they could repair it? Do that. We've done that on two buildings in the last 30 days. And it could be that. The repair is nearly as much as the new roof. Right. If that's the case, it's a no-brainer. Do they know where it's leaking? Do you know where it's leaking? So you're no, saying... You I sent them up there to look at the roof, and they found this is to be one of the major problems. They're saying that the drains is the, the culprit, they think, not not the vents, the plumbing vents and things of this nature. No. <coughs> uh, I'm just trying to think of the type of construction it is and how it's constructed, and uh, there's, I just can't, I, I'm, I'm having a hard time getting my arms around the fact that it can't be repaired. That's my thoughts, and, and look, I'm telling you, so, if the roof is totally deteriorated and it's causing it, you know, where it's lived, it's, it, it's outlived its, uh, time frame it's timed out oh yeah then we are but if it's a roof that has developed leaks just because of in, improper installation somewhere it appears to me there there's got to be a solution to correcting that what, what's the life of that type of roof if it's been on there 20 okay. years I was, that's exactly what i was wondering five years we got to go back they're going to redo the drains if the roof has deteriorated in five years, you know. That needs to be taken into consideration. That's got to be considered too. You don't want to fix something that you got to replace in a couple of years. I think we're doing good getting 20 out of it. What we've yeah. got. Yeah. Been there 20 years. I mean, it seems like to me that 20 years is a normal lifetime of a roof, particularly a flat roof. Again, there it comes up with the money on this. Are we taking this to the city council? And saying the city has a building out there that needs a new roof on it. Is that how we're pursuing that, you, or how are we going to? Why? I mean, how are we on the money? We're not going to be able to get it from the feds after we after we get all of our state funds available for that, woman. Is there any state funds available for a new roof on that thing? I think right now would be a bad time to ask the council for some extra. Well, I'm t what about the state? Uh, Possibility. What's our What's our balance? We could apply for a grant. When we get our our <coughs> money back from the state from the grants we've already got, what's our balance going to be? Do we know? Don't know. January we had a file for a reimbursement of FAA for two hundred and. We can ask Adam to come see if he has a thought on it. Eighty-three thousand. 
but that won't get us back to us yet. Uh, is this? No. <clears throat> I can speak that I know we've got some state grant money in the last couple of years for roof repairs on buildings at airports, hangars, uh, flat roofs even, uh, one in Fayetteville two years ago. So state does uh, put these grants forward and we, I can talk with James some after me too and some of the stuff that we've done even on flat roofs to get the cost down a little bit. Uh, both, yeah, repairs and replacements. Um, is that, is that? state managed federal funds or is that actually state funds state funds okay. that come through the uh tax from aircraft sales and fuel sales of aircraft get a 90 fuel. 10. uh you've got actually all three grants available this year 90 10 80 20 and 50 50 but 64,000 was that the number you had james so that would definitely be a 90 10 grant we brought you something to look at today another grant option so uh, you know you've got your full gambit of grants out there still that you have until june 30th to use and I can say the state's had two really good months me and James actually talked about this about three weeks ago so now's the time to get some grant applications in if you so choose so we're after we get our reimbursement so we're going to be about a hundred thousand dollars in the red but well, no, these are FAA uh, reimbursements, and we don't get the state reimbursement till the project's totally closed out. That's 10% of the project. So there's a substantial amount still out there that we're getting. Uh, March, long? probably. So when? March. It'll be about $200,000 coming in March. So by March, then our balance sheet is going to be back in the black. Mm -hmm. Back in the black by approximately 100000 FAA's reopened. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They're still processing checks, thankfully. So, <laughs> I, I, what I'm thinking I'm is, you know, the, the monies that we're going to have available, it may it's be a automatic. couple it's months. But we've no got people money automatic. Automatic. Uh, right. So our balance sheet, we got 273 coming from the federal government. Yeah, no. We got 200,000 coming yeah. from the state. Can't close out a grant Something. all the way. That's 500. We're 370. That's 120,000 dollars. <laughs> so we'll potentially in the black by the end of March. Is that right? Mm -hmm. well, that would leave, that would give, that would give us option to go ahead and do it and still well, apply for I the think grant. We'll apply for the grant. That's what I'm wondering. Yeah. Would we not be wise to go ahead and apply for that for the roof for the replacement? Yeah. And just see what happens. Sure. Yeah, and you could even have that going while you're researching other options, but have it in their hands and yeah, get it out there. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Well. That seems like a reasonable thing to do. We got a motion. Well, so make the motion. To, Let's say got two options down there. Do we, do we want to go into that level today and pick one? Either that, or we can elect to go ahead with the roof, and then we we, we don't have to uh, we don't on. we don't have to decide on the contractor today. We can. Well, also I got to get working on that. New quotes. These are from last year. Pardon me. I got to get new quotes either yeah. from last year. And, and if you get the new quotes, or when you get the new quotes, if the quotes can be both repair and or replace, <coughs> correct. From both from both companies, and then we can go ahead and look at. It. And then I would say we move to make that application to the state. I'd like to. I'd like to ask Adam. He was going to bring a proposal for how would this affect what you were going to propose today? Yeah, what I'm going to propose today is probably going to be a 9010 grant. It's going to be a little more expensive, but still within that 9010 grant option. So I'd probably say the roof would be an 8020 grant. So you'd be looking at matching 20% of the cost. Uh, and keep in mind, deadlines for state grants are the last day of the month to be on the next month's commission meeting. So if you want to be on February, today. it needs to be January, January 31st. Right. That's when you have to get your application in. I'll move we look at an 8020 on the roof. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and have Garver prepare the grant application. And have Garver prepare the grant application. Second that one. Do you need a number? We will need a, the state will want to see a, a good number for the application <laughs> based on quotes that the airport has received. Can you do that timely? Yeah, we'll have everything ready. Just once we get the number, just type it in and send it off. Okay. We have a second? Second. Second. Any discussion? Roll call. Gardner? Yes. Smith? 
Yes. Schoonover? Yes. Willoughby? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Collier? Yes. Parker? Yes. Wyman, you got the uh, airport yeah. activity report. Well, we've already talked about the finances quite a bit, so you got your report in there on those and the operations and the fuel sales. We've talked about that a little bit, but we hadn't talked about the property on Emma. That's next on agenda. Just move on to right. that. Uh, we've acquired two of the house, two of the three houses that we wanted to acquire. We've acquired the one on the very end and the one that's in in the back. The one in the middle is the one we haven't gotten yet, but they went and got their own appraisal, and their appraisal was 100% more than what our appraisal was. They compared it to commercial property and then valued it higher than the commercial property they compared it with. And I mean, it's, I looked at it and discussed it with the city attorney and said, we both concluded there was no point in entering into negotiations with them with an appraisal like that. Went ahead and started the process to file condemnation. So we should get, now it may take a while in court, but he'll file an order of possession and I'll have to give him a reasonable amount of time to move out. The other two houses are already vacant. And then when they get moved out and we get control of it, we'll have to get a asbestos survey done on them and then an estimate for demolition and so that will be coming back in a couple of months about the same time the money comes back so would it make sense to the two that we've got to go ahead and move forward with whatever needs to be done before get, we take if we, we'll get a better price if we do all three of them at the same time so, so now that the two are vacant, are they completely sealed? Pardon me? The two vacant ones, are they completely sealed up to prevent people from using them in an illicit manner? Go by and check on them. We've got keys to them. Uh, if we start having a problem, we'll have to board them up. Yeah, we keep a periodic check on them, make sure no one's breaking in. Right. Yes. Well, that's good news. Any other question from Wyman? If not, Adam, you want to talk to us about our the long-range plan? Sure. And I forgot my stuff. She'll pass these down. I want to keep going. So, a couple quick things first. Just a quick update on the runway rehab project. So, the last time I saw you, we hadn't started yet, and now we're done. Easy peasy. Uh, <laughs> a lot of good news. Work is substantially complete. We have one punch list item remaining on the MALSF system. Just waiting on an answer from the supplier. Overall, construction went very good. Uh, we finished a day ahead of schedule and about 100000 under budget. Nice. Um, it's a $2 million project. So is, is, it, is that attributed to the weather? The, uh, the time frame. Weather was very good. It rained once uh, for about two days over a weekend. Didn't so have couldn't have asked for anything better than that <coughs> with the weather. They, they actually worked through the rain that weekend, doing some electrical work, getting some trenches done. Wasn't a heavy rain. But um, yeah, we're going to use some of that money that we have left over, and we're going to get some upgrades to our Miles F lights, the ones that we replaced in 2011, I think with the state grant. Some of the in pavement lights had been hit with the plow a time or two could use a, a facelift so got the FA just yesterday to buy off on that so we're gonna spend ten thousand uh, dollars replacing those they were close enough to the project description we could get them in so all the new signs are out there working you probably noticed the taxiways are now called something different than east and west taxiway which makes it a lot easier when you're holding short you don't have to say I'm you know two north or the farthest south west taxiway connector you just say you're at Alpha 4 so uh, it's been real nice out there. We are uh, we have submitted the uh, updated airport diagram to be published with FAA. They've approved it. It'll be on the next cycle of the charts that come out that actually have all the names on it, along with some other updates of geometry that have changed in the last couple of years on the airfield. So everybody who's using the chart supplement will now see that information on their charts. So 
all good news on that project. Our schedule, like I mentioned earlier, for closeout, contractors ordered the parts for that additional mouse effort repairs that we're going to do. I'm still waiting on a scheduled delivery date for those. Probably sometime in February we'll do those. It'll take a, a half day to a day to install them, and then we'll close out the project and get your ADA reimbursement probably in March. Any questions on that project? <coughs> Thank you. So, uh, like I mentioned earlier, me and James got together after the uh, holidays and started talking about state grants. The state's had two really good months. They've had a million dollars worth of revenue the last t couple months, which, for comparison's sake, they've been averaging like 400000 a month, you know, for the last three or four years. So to have two million dollar months has been real, really great for the reserves. They're starting to push some bigger grants out. And so now would be a good time to get some grants in. Uh, we talked about possibly the roof grant. This is a grant that me and that you have in front of you right here that me and James scoped uh, just over the phone a couple weeks ago. Uh, it really was spawned by uh, some heavy aircraft that have been sitting on the apron over the last couple of years and leaving divots in the asphalt out there. You know, G4s, heavy gears uh, or heavy loads on the gears, and creating some some sinkholes in our asphalt. So we've seen this, and we've done a few of these in Oklahoma through their State Aeronautics Commission, where you come in, you basically rip up the asphalt in some sort of rectangular form and replace it with concrete, and that becomes your heavy aircraft parking. So when you have a big transient plane come in, you put them there. You want a little bit away from the terminal. That way you're not taking up space, because sometimes these guys stay for maybe two or three days. Um, and so we've just scoped one possible location we'll work with, the FBO to determine what the best place to, for this to be, for it to live would be, and the right size, the right sizing. Right now we've shown it, you could put two G4s on it or three Falcon 50s parked each way. We can look at different options, but big picture, from a budget standpoint, we could definitely get this thing in the 9010 grant, uh, which has a $150,000 cap. And so if this is something that you want to pursue, what I would ask for is um, some uh, direction to go ahead and apply for an ADA grant for this project as well. Uh, on this one, we would actually be able to apply for the grant based on the estimates uh, that we put together. And then if the state approves it, we'll go out, get bids, work with everybody to figure out the right spot for it, the right size for it, and go from there. My thoughts on that is going to get, we're going to need it more and more and more as time moves on based on what I observe the traffic out there. Yeah. More and more of the larger airplane. I think it's a good idea myself. Obviously, with you bringing that, you feel like this is the most important project that fits in that scope? Yeah, and with me and James chatted, you know, you're, uh, have, they, have they finished up the hangar door project now? So that's complete. Um, you know, that's probably another thing to look at in the future. But as far as we looked at the 20 year outlook and just spitballed uh, until we can get some higher state grant matching, which we're hoping maybe comes after the first of the year to where we can do hangers again. Uh, that, that this may be the best option for you. But I think if we get the state grants up, it becomes hangers from what James has told me, new hangar construction. So at what point in time do the divots that we have in the lot or in, on the uh, tarmac become problematic? Uh, boy, I mean, I could say are they could be there? probably already there. I mean, if a you know, a smaller plane came through it and had a prop strike because of it, it would be a, a big deal. Not to mention now uh, you're going to have water getting into that divot and you're going to see alligator cracking forming. It's just going to become a pothole soon. Yeah, when that asphalt gets hot, it doesn't have do, a whole lot do of Do we have drink. substantial divots now that need to be repaired? Well, this if this goes in, it would take care of it. It mm -hmm. would cover. Okay, yeah. got it. Yeah, I think that's where they're located, isn't that? The location yeah. is correct Order. to solve that problem. Yes. I like it. This is a big enough space. What are our odds or frequency that, now correct me if I'm wrong, depending on the winds, don't the uh, turbine aircraft need to be parked in a direction facing into the wind? Preferably, so taking that into consideration, is that a factor? This gives us a north-south orientation, which is our prevailing. And if you put three airplanes in there, you're going to be towing them in there anyway. You're going to have one yeah. taxiing in between those. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's going to be a towed-in situation. Yes. We will move the aircraft as they do currently. Um, the proposed location here would be 
be ideal because the primary wind direction is going to be north and south of our chariots. Uh, we currently do have divots that were created one that was created uh, earlier this year from the G4 um, that they almost didn't get out of. Uh, so we don't park it there anymore. I think it's in a similar location as where this is proposed. So we've been putting them on the southernmost uh, part of the anchor just before the grass. And that's worked out pretty well for us. Frequency, I would say, um, we see the air, uh, an aircraft the size of a, of a G4 uh, monthly, once a month, and tomorrow we're going to get our next one in. So it is becoming more and more frequent. Rarely have more than two of that size. Uh, yeah. You might have a Falcon 50 and a G4 here. Yes, I have seen that. I've seen that. <laughs> I move apply for 9010 for this project. Second. Motion second. Do we apply for the 9010? Any more discussion? Oh, I guess I need to tell Adam to prepare the <laughs> <laughs> Adam to prepare the grant. No, uh, or no that's in the motion, by the way. Roll call. Smith? Yes. Schoonover? Yes. Willoughby? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Collier? Yes. Barker? Yes. Gardner? Yes. Any old business? Comments from commissioners? Happy Thanksgiving. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. <laughs> uh, <laughs> See you in the fall. <laughs> kind of got, we did get balled up, I guess, with Christmas one month. The other month was just, uh, we didn't have a whole lot going and just seemed like the right thing to do at the time. But then we had another <laughs> delay, so. That's I'll apologize for that. If no other comments, we'll adjourn. Do it.